Hello, everyone. Welcome to part three of Circuit Streams Meet Your Instructor series. My name is Arcadius. I'm the Student Experience Coordinator here at Circuit Stream, but you all can call me Arky. Today, I am joined by the wonderful Usman Mir. Uh, he is one Hi, of our everyone. fabulous instructors. I'm going to call him Ozzy. Is that you cool with that? Yes, that's good. Perfect. So, yeah, we're just going to be chit chatting. I have some questions prepared for Ozzy. And this is really just so that all of you watching have the opportunity to really get to know Ozzy as an instructor, but also as a person, get a feel for his personality. And this is something that's going to be really useful for you later if you choose to do uh, any courses with us or do any one on ones and use Ozzy as your one on one instructor. So, first question I have for you here, my friend, is what was your background before joining Circuit Stream? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I went to the University of Calgary where I studied electrical engineering and switched to software engineering. Um, during this whole period, I was doing a little bit of software development on mobile devices mostly. And just a year before, uh, or just a couple of years before I joined Circuit Stream, I was getting pretty heavy into the XR development side of things. So bought a VR headset and started doing VR dev and some AR dev uh, before I got uh, picked up by Circuit Street. Oh, also doing some contract works for other educational institutions as well. Very nice. Okay, so what what was it that had you actually choose to come over with us? Oh, uh, you know, it's actually funny. Um, when I finally got the job offer from Circuit Stream, I actually got two competing offers, one from the University of Calgary as a member of one of the professor's lab, which wasn't, you know, the most appealing thing, but it was cool. <laughs> but uh, another one from the from STEM learning labs at the time. And so then I got into a little bit of a, a like, you know, grab for whoever can get me the best deal sort of thing. But the funny thing about this is I remember uh, during this, before the whole competition, I went and the company was, uh, not Circuit Stream, the other company was saying something like, you know, here's the job offer, we'll offer you this much an hour. And I was like, wow, that's disappointing. It's like how much I would make <laughs> if I was, you know, working at McDonald's for a few years, <laughs> you know? Like I, I was quite disappointed with, with that. So all of a sudden when Circuit Stream offered me a job, you know, suddenly they could afford to pay me double what their original offer was. The whole thing was like, no, this is what everyone gets. We can't go any higher than that. And then nice. suddenly there's competition and they, they changed their tune. Right. Yeah. Okay. I wonder, that must have really made you uh, <laughs> think of them differently. <laughs> yeah, that was one thing. Circuit Stream came out strong. Uh, and uh, when Lou was talking to me, he talked a little bit more about kind of the opportunities that we would have. What's the future of this company versus others? And I got really excited. I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's do this. We'll go, you know, we'll go around and explore the other conferences that are occurring in the XR field. I'll get the ability to mingle with more people um, that, you know, ideally have more experience than me and learn from them. Whereas in the other position, I would have been immediately a director role and not had anyone to learn from. Mm, that's interesting. So you would have had a high position, but you chose to not go that route because you want to continue learning. Is that kind of the understanding I have here? Yeah, because uh, that would have been like straight out of university. You're in director role and you have no one to learn from. That's it. So now you are all completely self-taught and I would be the one just doing everything there. But uh, with Circuit Stream, Lou made it very clear that he's growing a team. And I was looking forward to meeting some senior devs at the time and learning from them and working together with people. And I think that's quite valuable than simply getting a high title right out of the right out of university. I don't think it's very useful to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree, actually. Hey, something that I meant to mention when I first introduced you, but I didn't mention it uh, for anyone watching, Ozzy's going to be teaching our first uh, boot camp cohort. Oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, you excited? Yeah, that sounds uh, pretty sweet. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, teaching all that stuff. There is so much stuff in the curriculum. It's it's insane. So, 
Yeah, I'll it's pretty, it it's pretty wild. It's so comprehensive. So you just made me think of this when you're talking about, uh, you know, not having anyone to learn from, you wanted to start from the bottom. And I'm thinking now you're, now you're close to the top with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah but cool. we learned a lot along the way. It's been a few, uh, quite a few years now. So it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. Don't okay, regret I it. Sorry to interrupt you. I, uh, I want to kind of do a little bit of an origin story of Ozzy here. Okay. So <laughs> what, what got you interested in XR and Unity? Um, going way back, what, what, what got you interested in this industry in the first place? All right. So um, when I was pretty young, I, I did enjoy playing games a lot and uh, I wanted to make video games. Now, that being said, just because you like playing them doesn't mean you like making them. Mm -hmm. um, so initially, it was quite a hurdle trying to figure out what uh, software to use. I, I tried something like Game Maker 8. Uh, I think it was 8 at the time. I think it's much older than that. But uh, there was also RPG Maker. I tried these kind of visual scripting things. And I was just not really getting into it. I wasn't getting what I wanted out of it. And then I came across Unity about two years after it came out. and I saw that versus Unreal. Unreal cost quite a bit of money and I wasn't making money at the time. So I just went with Unity because it was free. Uh, but fortunately, Unity had a giant community already. There was There's so many resources out there for Unity to help you learn. Uh, and the Unity answer forms were great as well. And so I started picking up Unity. Uh, I was like, okay, I'll bite the bullet. Let me learn how to code. So I started learning uh, JavaScript. At By the, the way, Ozzy, how old were you at this point? I think it was probably uh, 12 or 14. Oh, like my that. goodness. Okay. Yeah. yeah, something like that. I think it was about 14. I'm not sure. But uh, then around that period, I, let's see, oh, what was I saying here? Yeah, so around that period, I started picking up JavaScript. Uh, Unity no longer supports JavaScript, which happened a few years ago, which I was like, no, I have to learn C-sharp now. But <laughs> it's great. Uh, I, I do like C-sharp a lot now. I'm far more comfortable with it. Um, but during that whole time, I was initially starting off as a mobile developer. And this one idea I was quite obsessed with was uh, painting in 3D. The idea of I could use my cell phone. And to me at the time, I didn't even think about augmented reality or anything. It was... But in the end, it, what I was trying to make was an AR painting app with my cell phone. But the technology just wasn't quite there yet. And so what I was using was like the primitive sensors, like the accelerometer and the gyroscope of my phone. I'm just going to show what the camera sees from the user's phone. And I will just say, you know, person is painting. And if they move their phone this much, I will transition the objects in the opposite direction. Like... Yeah, that kind of works, but if the phone jiggles a little bit or if it moves too fast in one direction, everything is kind of unsynced. It no longer is where it was. So, But that, that was an idea I was obsessed with, and I would kind of revisit it from time to time. And then I came across a Microsoft store, and uh, they were letting people try out the uh, HTC Vive at the time with the Tilt Brush application. And Tilt Brush is that idea of painting in 3D, but in VR. And I was just like, this is amazing. This is exactly what I've been obsessed with all these years. And so I, at the time, I hadn't made much money. So I just, whatever I had, plus student loans, just boom, buy uh, HTC Vive and a PC that can handle it. And uh, I spent about a year diving deep into VR dev and then AR dev. Uh, and at which point I started working on AR and VR projects. I started uh, teaching kids how to make uh, things in Unity and then started taking contracts from Academy of VR, Junior Tech Robotics, STEM Learning Labs, a bunch of these uh, organizations within Calgary for teaching people to code uh, or use Unity like Academy of VR. And uh, eventually, having done that for a while, Circuit Stream and STEM Learning Labs both offered me a position as uh, a VR or an Unity instructor and uh, XR instructor. I just, uh, that, at that point, I was all gun ho about working for Circuit Street. Yeah, it sounds like you were an extremely ambitious child. 
<laughs> ambitious young person. I'm I'm really curious. Um, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Jerry when I was interviewing him because you both developed these interests at a very young age. Um, what did your parents think when you were when you were getting heavy into the tech? Well, I was uh, a very fortunate position where my parents would just let me these uh, let me do these kinds of things and. You know, living in Canada, these things aren't particularly expensive compared to like in Brazil, where Jerry's parents must have paid like 4x what I paid. So, you know, relatively privileged position there. But uh, my parents didn't really like the idea of me being a game programmer. They, they thought that it's like, you know, it's do something more along the lines of mechanical engineering or uh, be a doctor or a lawyer or something like yeah. that. <laughs> but uh wasn't particularly interested in that. Um, but I, when I first joined uni university, I was like, okay, I'll do engineering. I went into electrical uh, in an effort to please them in a way. Uh, but I was bored out of my mind. Mm. Uh, there was a little, there was some programming courses I did while doing electrical. And I loved that way more. And so I switched to software and I uh, can't, can't say I regret it at all now. So I'm quite happy with that decision. And at this stage, my parents are quite happy for me as well. So it went uh, it went over well. Yeah. <laughs> and now you you have children, right? No, not yet. Unfortunately, Why do you think you have children? Maybe because when you're talking about Matrix, maybe um, I thought oh, you yeah. had kids. Uh, we have a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, disregard, disregard. I thought you had kids. <laughs> That's no, fine. Not yet. <laughs> um, I see David in the comments here. Boot camp sounds so intense. Uh, yes, but worth it. This is for people who want to either develop a uh, uh, a new career in the industry or for people who want to upskill who are already in the industry. So it's meant to be intense. Um and David has another great question, which is actually on my list, but we can ask it now. What was your proudest moment or coolest thing your students made? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, there have been quite a few instances where you just look at your students and are like, wow, I can't believe they went from nothing to that. That, that, was, that was cool. Um, funny enough, actually, when I was teaching kids, it was quite a bit more intense in that way. We're like, wow, this is like a nine-year-old kid who just made this, that's insane. So uh, that was one proud moment where I taught this kid and uh, I think her name was Anna and she managed to make this, um, oh, what is that? Like uh, there was this uh, show where there's a phone booth and then they would go into the phone booth and they would like travel through time and destinations or whatnot. Doctor Who? Doctor Who, yes. <laughs> she made a Doctor Who telephone booth and it was moving around in the Unity terrain and she made a little mini game out of that. So that was like super cool. I was super proud of that moment. Um, we did some game jams recently and one of our students uh, groups, they made this whole uh, uh, falling stars thing where the stars are falling down from the sky and they have a, a vacuum kind of, uh, sorry, it was a leaf blower and then they're like shooting the stars back up into the sky to make the constellations and stuff that was very cool to see very creative uh and i think another was people were you know they made this whole map the tower they had all these towers set up you can build walls and you're shooting a horde of zombies coming at you so you know there's a lot you'd uh you wouldn't expect it's just boom you do a game jam and all of your students just come out with some amazing ideas so it was mm -hmm. cool to see that but those three i think would be some of the top moments. And for anyone who wants to see that, uh, well, some highlights from the game jam, as well as that shooting star game, that was, uh, or falling star game, I should say, that was part of our last demo day. So you can search that on YouTube, demo day 10th edition, um, and you can see everything there. I That was one of my favorites as well. Um, yeah. So why teaching now? So you're interested in XR, you have gained these experiences, you're learning code. What got you interested in actually being an educator? Well, that's a great, uh, that's a good one. Um, so when I was in university, I was volunteering for the Schulich Community Robotics Program and the University of Calgary Robotics Association. 
Uh, I had a little interest in robotics and I wanted to explore that a little bit. So I joined those programs and they basically, they would teach the university students how to do this stuff and then expect us to then teach kids who joined the programs, you know, their parents will send them to the UFC and say, hey, there's a robotics program, go learn. And so we would then have to volunteer to teach the kids. Oh, we lost you. We paused. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. So what I was saying was I joined the Shula Community Robotics and Ukraine and stuff, and they would teach you how to work with these robots. And then you would be expected to voluntarily teach kids who, uh, who actually joined the program. So doing that, I did uh, the first year I joined it, uh, the SCRP, and they had us teaching Lego Mindstorms. And I was like, yeah, okay, Lego Mindstorms, not bad. Uh, that was interesting touch, first intro kind of into robotics. And I was expected to be kind of a teacher advisor, like a TA in the room uh, as one of the lead mentors uh, taught. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is kind of fun. These kids are pretty nice. Uh, so let me do that. Um, and then the following year I came back, they made me a lead mentor. I got to lead the class and it was quite fun doing that and then the following year i created my own program which was unity as i still wanted to be part of the program and then when i was teaching unity i'm like this is great uh th this is an awesome uh, place to uh, to be I, I i enjoy doing this and at this time i was still thinking i'll become a developer uh you know solely a developer but then i got uh, because of my program uh at the university where i was teaching unity that's when companies found that, oh, this is happening. Let me, you know, offer him a contract to teach our private schools or uh, Academy of VR and stuff. And then I was like, yeah, okay, teaching is even better than just being a developer. Mm -hmm. so, I'm, I'm really hoping we didn't miss anything there. We seem to be having some connection issues, but I'm not sure if it's me or you. Um, we'll just keep trekking along. I'm hoping that we captured all of that because you gave a really awesome answer. Oh, um. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kai. Yeah, I, I do enjoy it quite a bit. I even tutor my uh, cousin for free. Shh, don't, don't <laughs> tell people that. <laughs> um, how long have you been with Circus Stream now? It's been like, it's been a few years. Uh, it must be about four years or a little over four years now. Mm -hmm. What do you find is your teaching style? Teaching style. Well, I think uh, most of the instructors employ the Berkeley method, where we largely say, okay, pencils down, relax, watch me do this, and then pencils up, let's do it again, but together. That's generally the idea. Um, apart from that, it's like, you know, trying to do your best to engage people, taking short breaks. Uh, what I try to do, uh, this is all, not always the case, but every 20 minutes, I like to take a break for you know, anywhere between a minute to two minutes based on uh, what's going on, just to let people breathe and reorient because uh, it's been a while since I saw this study, but it was like, you know, after 20 minutes, people just gloss over, they stop picking things up. So you should give them a break. That's kind of what I was doing as well. So there's a lot of techniques like that, that uh, Circuit Stream like re has researched and we try to implement so that people are able to pay attention as much as possible and mm -hmm. follow along ideally so yeah mm -hmm. that kind of thing okay have you developed any of your own um techniques or anything like that or are you using the established method uh, i think we've all kind of contributed towards each other's growth as instructors but uh, one of the ones that i developed was sometimes uh, a class will not ask any questions they're oftentimes they're just afraid that their question will make them sound uh, dumb or something right it, it, which is you know unfortunate people think it that way but it's just how basically any classroom people will feel uncomfortable asking the question first so i will and uh unfortunately this might give it away but uh, i will sometimes pretend like someone asked a question privately and answer it for the class which will then get other people more comfortable asking questions so that's one technique that i came up with that seems to be working over the years Keep Which I love. 
<laughs> I love that. Um, for everyone watching, Ozzy shared that with all of us during an instructor meeting. We were all like, <laughs> that's amazing. Because because you're you're absolutely right. Um, there are always going to be people in class who feel like I'm the only one here who doesn't know what's going on. And you can kind of read their mind a bit and be like, oh, so-and-so has a question for me and get the ball rolling that way. It, does that always work? Uh, I've seen about a 95% success rate with that. So it, it does a pretty good job. Um, it doesn't work if people don't actually have questions. Like if it is pretty straightforward, the material we've covered, then it wouldn't uh, encourage anyone to ask questions. And a couple of times I made up a question uh, pretending as if it was from a student that someone actually wanted to ask. They're like, oh, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, who asked this? And then it's like, oh, snap. Who did ask that? I don't know. <laughs> Just got to be careful for that. <laughs> That's so funny. So so we see a lot of students coming in, um, especially now with our university partnerships. We see a lot of students coming in who are totally new to the industry. Um, what do you say to those people who are like, I want to learn something new. I'm interested in XR, but dang, this is really intimidating. What kind of mindset do you try to get those individuals in so that they can be successful? I, uh, I think the largest thing is to just break it down into chunks. So you're not just learning everything. Like uh, that's what you think you need to do everything at once. Um, I think one of the easiest ways to go about it is to say, what is the job that you want? Look at look up a job posting for a position you like. See the requirements and just break those down. Like start developing those particular skills. So if a, you know, a job says, oh, we need a Unity developer and... We want them to be comfortable with Photon. We want them to be comfortable uh, prototyping or whatnot. And so you look up those particular skills and what do you need to develop those further. Uh, our XR dev course is fairly broad. So it gives you a nice intro into a lot of topics and dives deep on some of the important ones. Uh, so you can kind of get a feel for, oh, I want to be a technical artist. So maybe I should focus on shaders or I should focus on this and just you know take it step by step. Build up your skills that way. Uh, and if you're looking for a job, you know, work out a good resume, set up a portfolio and all these things. But uh, it's largely, it's a long journey. Don't expect it to be quick. It's going to take time. You know, take it at your pace and just keep focused. It's fun. So, you know, enjoy yourself. If you're not enjoying yourself, you know, I don't know what to say that, uh, you know, it's made up. <laughs> So on that note, not to put you on the spot, so if you don't have an answer, that's okay, but just off the top of your head, can you think of any students who came into a course that you were teaching just utterly clueless and you saw them just skyrocket, whether it's they, they developed a career later on or even if it was just within the parameters of the course that you were teaching, they just, something just clicked and they got it? Oh, um... Yeah, there was, uh, I think his name is Ali, and uh, he ended up getting a position in Toronto as more of like a managerial role, but uh, I think he was struggling quite a bit for the first half, and then when we started programming with VR, and it was starting to make sense, like, okay, okay, I get it, and then about you know, 60% of the way there, he was like, okay, yeah, I got this, this is, this is amazing, let's do this. Let's dive deep. Uh, a lot of it probably has to do with the amount of time they have available. But uh, I think he had like a three or four days off and he was just like, okay, I'm going to watch the videos. I'm going to pay attention to class and boom, started making sense. And he started making his own portfolio projects. Uh, and he ended up uh, getting a position based on one of those ideas that he had. Do you know off the top of your head what his background was? Uh, he was a project manager for uh, some transit systems or something like that. Okay, so this was like an industry change yeah. completely for him. Okay, that's oh, super cool. I, okay, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. A lot of students ask me for examples of people who, you know, who came in at my level, <laughs> my level of understanding being zero <laughs> and Amazing. are now working in the industry. And it, it does happen. It happens a lot more than we maybe talk about mm -hmm. as a company. And this is something that we 
we really need to impart upon students that you you can do it. If you put in the work, you can do it. Um, so in your experience now, Ozzy, what do you find in tangible terms really makes the difference between students who thrive in our courses and students who maybe don't, um, I don't want to say don't do as well, but maybe don't achieve the goal that they set out for themselves. I see. Oh, I sometimes look at student feedback. Generally, people are quite uh, happy with their uh, reach. I think the you know very rare times when people uh, don't get what they want, it's it's largely like they have no free time. They're doing the course in like you know every they can dedicate maybe just three hours a week. And that is just attending class and that's all the time they have then it's like okay you're you can absorb as much as you can but you do need to practice outside of class to really let it sink in and i i think that's the biggest factor i think if anyone has a couple hours beyond just what the class uh, teaches to just practice that'll make a huge difference mm -hmm. agreed in student experience we actually recommend six to ten hours outside of class. Um, yeah. yeah, for people who really, really want to learn, <laughs> you you need to put in some extra time. So, so really, what you're saying is you need to be able to dedicate time outside of class in yeah. order to really hit your goals. Right, exactly. Um, I got Oh, I see some questions in the chat here. Um, what would you say a student who is in a rut? What would you say to a student who's in a rut? Great question. Um, I, I would generally just say, you know, take a look at what we've done today or in this class or in this section and just see if you can develop a project out of that. So, you know, like, OK, go back to the early lessons where things were very simple, build an application around those features. So, you know, we one of the classes, we build this uh, spaceship game where you're flying around the solar system. It's like, OK, expand on that idea. What can you do? Or, you know, check out these. Uh, this check out this unity uh, tutorial uh, that they have called rollerball get yourself started right those are the kind of things i get people to do um some of the challenges we have are you know nice and relevant to the class that we just did so attempting those to keep you uh going is uh, is great uh, one of the big ones is also to attend office hours if you get a course with circuit stream you have unlimited access to office hours uh, every day, there's an instructor holding, you know, an open forum for anyone who wants to join as an alumni or current student. And so you can always just kind of, whenever you get stuck, go there, get some extra help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. The really cool thing about office hours as well, because um, because I know, because anytime a student is really uh, struggling, they come to me <laughs> and yeah. I say, go to office hours. And they're like, but Arky, I don't even know what I don't know. I don't know what to ask. And you can just observe and hear the questions that other students are asking. And, you know, for people who are total beginners, that'll help you get some of the vocabulary. Um, and I think sometimes just observing office hours can be really, really valuable. And then later on, you can figure out what your questions are, right? Right. I've actually had a few times uh, students come in just to observe and at the end, uh, they would say like, no, I'm just here to watch. And then towards the end of the office hours, when most people have asked their questions, they will like, oh, you know what? I figured some, what I want to do out here. How would you approach this? And then we'll get into a little conversation at the end too sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, what other questions do we have here? David also asked, uh, what is the thing that blew you away regarding the potential of the Unity engine? Oh, uh, I've been blown away by Unity so many times. I, I, can't, <laughs> even, I can't even say, but uh, I think the the very first time was simply making a physics simulation, like just creating a basic game where it's I can, you know, move my little capsule around and click the button to shoot something. I was like, oh my god, I made this! That's amazing. And then um, <laughs> the the next time was when I created a mobile app for the first time. I had a little like. The thing with the gyroscope where you can turn and a ball rolls around so that was another like amazing moment um uh the but the probably the biggest was i made a 3d model i put it in unity and i entered unity in vr 
and I was that was like the biggest blown away like oh my god being in VR in a place that you made that is amazing Be best feeling very good okay I just lost connection for a second so it's on my end so weird pauses that's what's going on everyone <laughs> yeah. um okay so there's a there's a question that the team wants me to to ask all the instructors when I'm interviewing them. We kind of talk about this a little bit in our instructor meetings, but what's your opinion on the metaverse? What the metaverse? is the metaverse? This okay, is such a buzzword fair. now. Um, I'm actually currently uh, working on a metaverse with uh, a FOMA. So I'm their senior software engineer and creative director. Um, I, my opinion on the metaverse is it's a great it's a great excuse for a lot of funding going towards massively multiplayer uh, games, in my opinion. So I always like making games. And to me, a meta the metaverse is just uh, a very interesting game. It's a nice place for people to meet online and, you know, do whatever kind of activities they'd like to do. Uh, definitely some, uh, it's definitely a lot more business oriented than a classic, like, uh, you know, World of Warcraft scenario. But I think it's, it's a great future. I, I my cat's name is Matrix, for example, right? Like I, I, I'm obsessed with the idea. So is he there? Uh, he's not in the room. Do you want to uh, sim by him? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get him towards the end of the interview. Then, um, but yeah, I, I think it's a, a great opportunity for a lot of people to connect. Um, mm -hmm. My idea personally was to bring cell phone users more, uh, you know prominently into the metaverse. So for example, person holds their cell phone and they have hand tracking enabled with their cell phone. The cell phone is a window into the metaverse and their hand being tracked is their way of having presence and interacting with uh, other users like VR users who have controllers and stuff. But uh, I think it has a it has a big future ahead. Uh, Yantic's working on their AR metaverse. And those, that's kind of another thing going on. Uh, but yeah. Did you have any particular questions about the metaverse? No, just a general <laughs> blanket question about the metaverse, because everyone's talking about the metaverse. Um, lots of people don't really know what it is fully. And my understanding of the metaverse is that it's something that has always been there. And it's just a special word that we're now using. Right. I think it was in a, written in a book somewhere uh, a long time ago, but I, I'm excited for it. I, I think... Uh, Facebook or Meta now, they're, they're really pushing it uh, hard and that really got everyone uh, excited for it. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's a matter of reputation for these companies, but uh, I'm, I'm excited. I, I love the idea. I'm, I'm probably out of all the instructors at Circuit Stream, the most gun ho about it. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you think would be the next thing that impacts all of our lives, like not just people who are into tech, what, what is going to trickle down to the lay person? What do you think is going to be the next big thing in tech that's going to really impact most of our lives? I think uh, smart glasses will be a bit, yeah, like uh, Apple glasses, for example, those are coming out. I think that's the next big step. Uh, even if they manage to go further and just put it as a contact lens, who knows? But, oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, that would be intense. I, I think that would be a big next thing. Uh, I don't know how well this Neuralink project is going to work with what, uh, I think, I, I can't remember which uh, company, but Elon Musk's yeah. uh, company, uh, Neuralink, if we can get that kind of system going, I think that would be the biggest impact on human society, being able to just download information straight in your head. So I think those are the next two things. I don't know how realistic uh, the Neuralink thing is, but definitely AR glasses are going to be big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David said like the Batman movie. No spoilers for anyone. There is tech in the Batman movie. Is, <laughs> yeah. uh, really similar to something Ozzy just mentioned. Um, and Kai's question, do you think that Unity will support the Apple glasses? Oh, for sure. No? There's. I cannot imagine Apple you know, not giving support to Unity for this kind of tech. It's, there's just the biggest community of developers that's using Unity. It wouldn't make any sense to cut that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of following along the tech questions there, Dave is wondering, in your opinion, what has been a better experience with an XR device 
out there. Um, for example, Quest versus, do you say Vive or Vive? Vive. Vive or something else. You take it away. Okay. Um, I love Beat Saber. That's the kind of thing you're talking about. Uh, I think Half-Life Alex is, uh, is quite good. It's a better, better experience hardware-wise. Uh, the Valve Index is probably your best bet right now. But uh, the HTC Vive, the headset, is quite heavy in comparison to the Oculus Quest. Uh, but if you ignore that part of it, the convenience of the Quest, the Vive is like much better. Uh, you know, it's much higher fidelity. It's much more powerful. It can, uh, it can render much more, uh, you know, particles, and graphics. Everything about it is. It's more powerful. Just the controllers aren't as great as the Quest controllers. But if you plug a Quest into your computer using the Oculus Link, you get something almost as good. Uh, just that the screen density and all that stuff isn't quite there. Eye tracking, if you're looking at the Vive Pro Eye, that is a nice alternative to, to that. I haven't done many experiences with eye tracking. I created one for HTC's presentation uh, back at AWE where uh, we did a whole heat map of where a person is looking at a grocery store. Based on where they're looking, those products become brighter. It lets us know that what's the most appealing product, that kind of thing. Love it. Love it. So on a, let's, let's get personal. Let's get on okay. a personal note here. So what kinds of projects are you working on? outside of circuit stream. I know you showed me one before we went live here. If you want to chat about that a bit and uh, who, who are you outside of, outside of teaching? What, what is your, what else do you have going on? Great question. I'm going to just quickly link a website here. Um, so in turn, oh, can I link it in the comments or where do you do that? Uh, yeah, so. I see your private chat. So yeah, I'm working on a bunch of projects uh, outside of circuit stream. Um, you know, I enjoy a lot of time going, uh, eating at sushi with my wife. It's one of our favorite things to do. i uh, going out watching movies, of course, uh, the classic stuff, but, uh, in terms of the more professional side, I am going through, uh, you know, different pro uh, steps of the interview processes with, uh, the antic, uh, meta, uh, a FOMA. I've already gotten a job with them, Shopify, and a bunch of other companies. So I'm always in talks with those kinds of people and just seeing where things are, are going. And so I, I literally created a website just because Neantic was like, can you showcase some stuff for us? And boom. So that, that's what I did. So outside of Circuit Stream, those are the kind of things I'm doing. And what I want to do is continue working at Circuit Stream, regardless of what, uh, what role I get in the future. Kind of like Tamara. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was just a funny thing to say. No, that's <laughs> awesome. You're like, I want to keep working here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for You're sure. <laughs> I, I do like the industry a lot. Uh, and, I, and I've talked with Lou about that sort of thing. And I think it's it's good for everyone uh, if I do that. So uh, I don't know if you uh, dropped that link in the chat there. but th that Yeah, I did. Good, uh, um, and, and David's checking it out. He's asking, what's the Nestle project? The Nestle project? Sorry. Yeah. I wonder, is that a typo, I wonder? What was the Nestle project? I don't remember seeing that. Could you expand on that a little bit, David? I don't remember seeing <laughs> that. Yeah, we'll wait, we'll wait for him to comment. Um, but, uh, for example, one of the demos I'm working on now is I have a Arduino Uno, and what I'm gonna do is create an AR application where you basically, you have your phone, it's uh, server connecting to the Arduino and you can tap on your phone somewhere in your floor there and the robot will turn and move towards that location. So that's the demo I'm trying to create right now uh, that will showcase Unity's ability to communicate with, uh, you know, physical devices like actual uh, embedded systems. So this microcontroller will help me achieve that and uh, I'm going to flare it up with a little bit of AR. Flare it up. <laughs> yeah, not, you know, I gotta, I gotta make it look good. AR is the only way to make things look good, you know. <laughs> Forget about in real life. Yeah, that stuff is lame. <laughs> AR or VR, nothing. 
Um, David elaborated. So what he was talking about is how um, we say that we've we've taught students from who work for Nestle. So we have taught students who come from all manner of of well known companies. So that's I think that's what Dave is referring to, not a specific project that you did, Ozzy. Right. Um, uh, I don't believe myself. I don't think I was the instructor who taught the people from Nestle, so I can't really speak on that. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. And this would have been before I before I started here. Um, oh, Kai signing off. Thanks so much for joining us, Kai. Um, what do you do when you're not doing XR, tech, robots? What do you do that is totally separate from that world? Or are you just utterly immersed? Like you're living, breathing this stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. I, I literally last night I was up at up till like 5 a.m. doing these uh, these kinds of things. This uh because I, I'm going to try and make this work, but I also had this uh, kind of homework assignment from Facebook to do. And so I was up a little bit doing that. <laughs> so it, it's mostly this stuff, but yeah, you got to like uh, going out with the wife. We watch TV. I do like playing music. So that's one thing. Yes, uh, yes. You know, guitar, drums, these kinds of things. So that is one other hobby. I just don't do it as much as I uh, used to, but that, that is a fun one for sure. What's your, what's your genre? I, uh, for the drums, I particularly like jazz and Latin music. Uh, rock is also really good, but uh, that's largely Latin music. Uh, my favorite beat is the Cascada. So I, I enjoy playing that. And my uh, favorite drumming song is Sing, Sing, Sing by uh, Benny Goodman. So there's some uh, jazz tunes there. Mm -hmm. Are you, you're in a band, right? Not anymore. It's, it's been a while. Okay. I haven't had time. <laughs> okay. I've, I've heard buzzings that, that Ozzy is a musician. Do you, do you have any, um, any videos or any recordings or anything? Oh, it's so bad. I can't, <laughs> I can't hear it. <laughs> so it's, it's quite embarrassing. The, uh, the ones that I, when I played uh, outside of school, school, I played in the jazz band and stuff, but outside of school, I was in the phase of heavy metal and there's some screamo in there and stuff. So, you know, it wasn't <laughs> exactly my style, but those are the only uh, bandmates that I had or the, the, those kinds of uh, genres. So I had to eventually hey. leave that behind. Yeah, on that note, uh, Monday asked a really great question here. Do you have any new projects integrating music or sounds in a new way? Oh, sure. Oh, uh, David, yes, my wife does complain about not getting enough attention. That's definitely <laughs> good. Um, do you get any new projects integrating sounds, music in a new way? Well, actually, that is a part of uh, what this is going to be. Uh, I'm going to try and put some audio files through the uh, cell phone as well, but uh, largely what the microphone is uh, is picking up on the cell phone will you know cause this to color up in a different way cause some effects so that that's kind of on the roadmap for this project but in terms of the existing one was largely you're in vr you're surrounded by digital content of course and those like the birds are shaking to the music to the beat every bass they flicker and their colors are changing as they flap around. So that's that's one other thing. Uh, David, what are the Arduino Unity libraries? Can you direct us? Oh, uh, sure. I have a few different resources for that open right now, actually, because what I'm currently working on, I'm going to just share them in the private chat. And yeah, share with uh, me. I'll put them in the, in, the, in the public chat. There you go. So that's the one I'm working with right now. So maybe you can give a... So a little bit of research there. So I haven't dove in deep into it yet. I'm just first starting off by building the actual thing. <laughs> R2D2 beep sounds. How did you know, <laughs> David? That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna have the lights flicker and the beeping going on. And I was literally gonna use uh, so the way I was gonna approach it was when you look at the actual you look at this, it'll act as like an image target. And uh, eventually it'll sync out without needing the image target, but the image target will digitally display R2D2 on top of it as the uh, physical object moves around. It'll beep and all that stuff. So, David, you, 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 you took away the surprise. Now I'm going to figure out something else. 
<laughs> when is that going to be done? When are you going to share that with all of us? Oh, hopefully soon. Hopefully this weekend. Um, I just started last night, so I managed to construct only this much. So we'll see. It shouldn't take too long. Seems like a fairly simple thing to do. Uh, it'll be uh, it'll be nice to be able to demo it. Yeah, and you're gonna have to post that in our showcase channel so yeah, everyone sure. can see that. For sure, for sure. So we're I I reached the end of my 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 preconceived questions for you. Is there anything else you want to share with people so they can kind of get a sense for? who you are, or perhaps if someone wants to book a one-on-one -on -one with you, what, what do you love to help with? What kinds of projects would you be super interested in helping people with? Oh, um, well, me personally, I, I'm super excited about anything XR, so it, but it doesn't particularly matter. Uh, strong suits are definitely kind of the, you know, mechanical sides of things, making physics simulations work, these kinds of things, because I like, uh, I've done so much vector math and stuff, uh, linear algebra that kind of plays a good role in those things. Uh, so that, that's one. Uh, I love, you know, magical things like creating spell casting and telekinesis, these kinds of things. But that all comes down to the mechanics. Um, I like working on shaders and particle effects with VFX graphs. So building up a nice uh, reference there. Um, other than that, like, I'm really open to anything. Sound simulations, as I do a lot of. Uh, sound stuff as well and uh yeah i think those are the key things so if you if you're interested in those i would be happy to work with you um apart from that i, I i'm not picky it's xr i love xr it doesn't matter what it is and for anyone who loves cats oh, you can show yeah. off cats discuss cats that's right. Let me go grab the cat, actually. I said yeah. I I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, brief intermission, everyone. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, David, he did answer favorite Unity assets. I think that that was one of the uh, links that he shared with me that I reshared in the chat, if you're able to see that. Um, thanks so much to everyone who's here right now. Um, thanks for joining. I really, really love reading your comments and it makes this uh, a much more, um, interactive experience, which I really love. Um, and there is a pets channel on Slack, David. And here he is. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Matrix. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing, dad? <laughs> Good. He's gotten so much bigger than when we got him. Nice. Yeah, he's huge. I I was in a uh, I was in a meeting. We we're well, we were in an instructor meeting, I think, and you had him up on your shoulder, and then he slipped off. <laughs> well, sweet. he likes to climb on my shoulder sometimes. So just get him. <laughs> oh. Little sweetie, how old is he? He's a young boy still. Yeah, he's uh, must be about three and a half months old. Okay, still, still a young boy. Oh, uh, unit favorite Unity asset. Ooh, favorite Unity asset. That's a good question. Let me double check. Does shader graph count? <laughs> That's one of my favorites. It's super fun to work in shader graph. I highly recommend getting into that if I was you. Yeah, very young. Okay. Um, yeah. He's his sister. No, she's not. Yeah. <laughs> David asks every time. <laughs> like, we're definitely not related. Um, okay. Anything else you'd like to? Oh, sweetie. He's oh, I love that. Lazy right now, but yeah, yeah. I love that white on his forehead. Yeah. Very nice markings. Are you gonna get a sibling for Matrix? Ah, oh, that's uh, it's tough because uh, I'm already allergic, so it's it's like can I handle two cats now? Yeah, I think it's so funny every time I'm chatting with you, you're just like ever so slightly nasal. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. It's because of him. <laughs> Worth it though. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, we've, we've reached the end. Is there anything else that you want people to know about you? Anything else you want to talk about? Um, 
Not that I can think of off the top of my head, but uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free, message me on Slack. Uh, there is that uh, website link there. If you have questions about one of those projects that I made, uh, one of those demos, I'd be happy to answer that as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to maybe even creating a workshop around uh, making an Arduino work with Unity. That's kind of my plan at this stage is uh, to be able to make a nice workshop for everyone around that. And for anyone who's in our first iteration here of boot camp, Ozzy is going to be your guy. Yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining me, Ozzy. Um, yeah, just had a nice, nice informal chit chat here. Thanks to everyone who joined. Um, this is being recorded, so this is going to be on on the YouTube. And uh, oh, my doggy's joining us now. And um, yeah, chat with you soon, Ozzy. I'll end the broadcast. All right. Take care, thanks. everyone. Thanks yeah, for thanks coming. for joining everyone.